Hello audiophiles, this is Fernando from SkyFi Audio. Today I'm going to do a quick um, overview on these uh, pretty rare and exemplary Jadis Eurythmy speakers made in France in the 1990s. Uh, we've had these for a couple of years now. These have been our reference speaker here at SkyFi Audio. And we've enjoyed them quite a bit. They are set up in our bay, listening bay number two. Um, and we've used a ton of different amplifiers and configurations with them over the years. Um, these were part of a very large purchase that we made from an audiophile that passed away, unfortunately. But he was in the process of assembling one of the largest Jadi systems you could ever imagine. I think it featured somewhere over 24 different boxes, or what I call chassis, between the amps, the crossovers, the preamps, etc. It was quite a system. Well, we've sold off uh, some of those pieces already, and... Um, as I mentioned, these have been a reference speaker, but I think it's time to, to let them move on. Um, our shop is absolutely overwhelmed with equipment. We can barely fit in here at this point. Uh, we have stuff everywhere, so um, we need to make some room. Uh, so over the last two years, uh, people have seen these speakers in our videos and have inquired, when are we going to sell them, when are we going to sell them, um, and that day has come. So I thought I'd do a quick video. These will post online today on our website, skyfiaudio.com. Um, so um, this video is just more of an informative video for potential buyer, also just for future, because there are pretty extraordinary speakers and, and rare. So um, let me go into it. So 1995, 1996, I remember seeing these in the cover stereo file. I was a young lad at the time, and these were on the cover. And I got to tell you, back in 1996, there weren't very many companies producing exotic, crazy looking horn speakers like there are today. If you look at uh, any hi-fi shop right now, you will find uh, examples everywhere of, of sort of art artistic endeavors and attempts at making speakers with just as much artisan as it is fidelity, which is what I really like. Um, we've got a pair of horn speakers that are facing backwards right now, but just to give you an, an idea of what people are doing nowadays. So yeah, 1996, this was super, super rare um, and unusual. And I remember looking at them going, wow, they look like many, many things. And one of the things that came to mind is, is the judge from Pink Floyd's of the movie, The Wall. Um, they kind of resemble, if you remember that movie, uh, it's quite graphic, the scene, but these certainly look and remind me of, of, of that. So 1996, Jadi made these, and there were a staggering $40,000 back then. By today's dollars, I suspect it would take over 100 grand to make a speaker of this um, complexity and detail and, and technology. So uh, it was a ton of money then. It's still a ton of money today, but they are uniquely enough where I think it's a great value even by today's standards. So the Jadi Eurythmy J1 is the exact model designation on these, uh, is a four-way loudspeaker. Um, so let me point out the ways <laughs> in which this composes a four-way loudspeaker. So down at the bottom, you've got a, a pretty conventional 12-inch, uh, that's a good, pretty sizable woofer in this cabinet. Uh, you get a sense of the the proportions of the cabinet, also the complexity. Look how many curves, uh, compound curves are happening here. I can see one, two, three, six of them just with a quick glance. So it's quite an intricate structure to build. Uh, they tip forward in a framework of metal in the back. Uh, they sit on these plinths, which I will talk about a bit more later. And then um, they were braced uh, in the back as well and supported. So. Starting here at the middle, this is a lower tweeter or horn tweeter uh, for the low frequencies, well, the, the low side of the high frequencies. This is the super tweeter here, um, and then this entire structure here is the, um, the mid-range, and that is a conventional speaker fitted to a horn. Uh, if you can see here, this is somewhat conventional uh, mid-range. Uh, I believe this horn is made out of fiberglass and it's covered in this sort of felt material, which is kind of neat. Uh, it's good at hiding fingerprints and looking presentable. The horns here, let me give you a close up of the, the woodwork. These are fully laminated, beautifully made uh, horn structures and lenses, a super tweeter as well. And then looking at the back of that, see the compression driver there and the wiring for the tweeter. 
So pretty intricate, uh, elaborate, and, and, and neat presentation. Now these sit on these plinths that uh, match the footprint of the speaker cabinet, and those house the crossover network. Um, and what you will find in that crossover network is incredible flexibility. There's got to be seven different ways of connecting amplifiers to these. So at the absolute top extreme, you would uh, quad amplify each of these speakers. So you'd provide four channels of amplification, uh, one for each driver, through an elaborate active um, crossover network, which we had at some point. Um, we figured um, someone's going to want a simpler version of it, so we've sold that piece off. So what you're left with now is the ability to either provide your own active a crossover network or uh, buy amplifier or even single amplifier them. So at the simplest form, you could just hook up a regular, you know, single channel of amplification. Here we've got a the JID 845, which happens, I'm sorry, 845, which happens to be a fabulous match for this speaker. Um, so I think it's about 14 watts, single tube amplifier, you can see it here, uh, feeding a standard crossed over single input. So at a simplest form, you need one channel of amplification. Uh, there are connections in case you want to biamp them. So put two drivers on one amplifier and two drivers on the other amplifier using the internal crossover, which gives you some nice flexibility, much like a conventional speaker you'd find today. Speaking of amplifiers, because of their efficiency, which is absolutely insanely high, you are have a million options here. Let me look at the specs here. I've got my phone here in front of me. The, um, so they list sensitivity on these speakers at, a, at um, 103 dBs uh, with bi-amplification and 96 dBs with mono-amplification. So the two scenarios I just told you about are extremely, extremely high efficient. So 14 watts will more than rock this speaker. Uh, and that's what we've been using lately with it. Um, we'll also try to see what happens when you give it a lot of power. Here we've got a Krell KMA 160s, I believe, uh, several hundred watts of Class A amplification. These were pretty tremendous as well. Different, um, but also uh, a lot of fun to be able to mix and match and not be limited by too much power or too little power. Just about anything you feed into these arrhythmies will, will work well. Uh, we've also tried, we have uh, four of these um, 845 monoblocks. So a nice step up from here would be to purchase the Eurythmy speakers with four of these monoblock amplifiers for that super high efficient bi amplification. And that would be a neat, neat setup. That's probably what I would go for if, uh, if I could afford it. All right, other specifications on this. So it's listed as a four way hybrid horn dynamic driver loudspeaker. Um, crossover frequencies are at. Um, 180, 707 kilohertz. Um, peak power handling 70 watts. <laughs> Obviously, really low because of the sensitivity. Dimensions are set at uh, 59 inches by 27 by 27. About 200 pounds a pop. And manufactured in 1996. So I've been back and forth on whether I should play some music for you. I kind of feel silly when I do that. I've got a mono microphone sitting on my shirt, so I never really quite understand the benefits of playing something. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep from doing that in this video. If you find value in that, can you please let me know in the comments? Because I've always wondered uh, whether I should take the effort to to do it or not. Um, and then if I hear a lot of people want to hear them, then I will set up the microphone and play a, a good track on these, so you can experience these experience these remotely. So as mentioned, these will go on our website. They're going to be expensive. This is the only set I can find anywhere for sale in the world right now. And uh, they are quite special. Um, the literature from, from Jadi speaks about the artistic quality of it. Uh, and so does a great stereophile review, which we've posted online as well in our listing. So um, who is this speaker for? Where, uh, you know, a, a collector, someone a notifile that wants something super, super exclusive, some piece of history um, that enjoys uh, horn speakers, and particularly these sound amazing with, with vocals and you know wooded instruments and jazz and any sort of like you know wood toned music and instrument sounds phenomenal. Very, very transparent and have a great ability to throw a, a soundstage. Uh, slightly towed in, a couple degrees each. 
because of the size of the horns and the ability to play sound, they, they do image incredibly well, as you can also verify with the, uh, with the stereo file review. So that wraps it up. Um, please like and subscribe if you enjoy these videos and uh, visit us online. We've got well over 500 items at this point listed all sorts of cool vintage gear from you know Moran's Macintosh audio research we've got tons and tons of neat stuff and if you're ever in Glen Rock and you want to pop in give us a call we'd love to show you the shop it's quite a crazy place uh, lots to see and lots to enjoy so thanks for watching and, uh, and take care